Yo, cool. Good morning, everybody. Anybody? Probably right now, nobody. <laughs> Good morning, anyways. Good afternoon, whenever you're watching. So I'm back on the same thing I was doing yesterday, but I have been tightening up the lines. So right before I came on, I was just finishing these up because I don't want to be working on the white lines anymore. Done with the white lines. I want to work on the orange, like reddish colored ones that I'm going to be putting up above here. And then... I like the way they did that too. That's cool. I'm looking at a picture of myself here. Okay. So eventually I'm gonna have to knock on the bed a little bit. So I seriously need to make a paint run. I can only imagine some people go and do everything online. I guess if I figured out what I, if I had like a set of characters that I was doing for like, if I was gonna be working on a, a character line that I actually was creating, making the characters, molding them, then I would know the colors that would be standard. Then you can order stuff like that online. But for me, I have to show up, look around. I'm a craft store junkie. That's my uh, that's my uh, Disneyland. Hang out in the craft store. Bunch of old ladies looking at plastic flowers. That's fun. So. On this right here, I want to, I'm going to tighten this line up. This looks ugly as hell to me. I don't like it. I don't like how it gets a little woggly here and right here it gets a little woggly. So I'm going to eventually have to remake those colors again. And I'm going to do that right when I go back to roughing up my piece again. When I do that, I'm going to have to kind of recreate the colors and then darken or lighten them a little bit in some cases. So for the orange, I don't want it to be too orange. So I start off with an orange. I know that sounds crazy. I don't want it to be too much. I add some red, darken it. And then I bring back my orange with yellow. Go back to the primary. Start to see if I can find the orange I'm looking for with my yellow. Because so I want it to be a little more red. But I don't want to just keep throwing orange in it because orange is just a medium. <laughs> go back to the source any chance you can go back to the primary if you're going to be like manipulating a color i'll start with the color that's close a purple but i know purple blue and red so i like to have some blues and reds there to then manipulate that purple to the purple i want I did college, I did stuff, I didn't go crazy with it. So my art's, my art's mostly been learned through some college. I always find people who I find to be just good artists, like the best artist that I would conceive and just bug the ever living stink out of them until I get what I'm, you know, until I, not what I need, but get what I get what I want to talk to them about. See if they'll come jabber with me. You can usually get that. Sit down. Most people want to talk about their art. And I usually like to bring it to a level of actual art, like 
what kind of brush, what paints are you using? I always find artists like to talk about that kind of stuff. A lot of times they get asked, what inspires you? I mean, really, I don't think artists know, they do. Some artists run an inspiration line for a while. But if you're if you're just kind of having if you always have fun with your art, I mean, I can't say that's weird too. I let whatever happens at the moment inspire me. So I'll be sitting in a coffee shop and I will be watching things happen, and I will need to have to have my paper with me or my iPad with me or something that I can doodle with. So right now I am going to, like I said, this is a watered down version of my um, of my paint for 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 reference of what I'm talking about here. I've been discussing this in all my videos, really. So I just kind of have to keep bringing it up. Whenever I'm doing my uh, my map or anything cosplay, especially anything that has a, a symmetry to it, I leave it really watered down looking. So when you get close, you can see that's really opaque or translucent in the fact that I really watered down the uh, opacity of my of my uh, acrylic. And the reason why I said it is because it almost allows me to move it better too. I notice I can get it into cracks and grooves better. And when you're doing, it depends on how you want this. Because at the very end, what I'm going to probably end up doing is lightly roughing it. When I say roughing it, sanding it or taking something, maybe a wire brush and flicking some stuff away to get back to lower layers to create that I should have painted the bottom layer brown like a real thick brown like light brown so wood so then I can do all this and then fleck off a little I wasn't I wasn't thinking that far ahead could do it for a future so what I also would be doing in a lot of cases is, like I said, my airbrush, I've mentioned this before also, my airbrush is currently out of commission in the fact that I need to get myself another air compressor. So I'm gonna be getting myself a nice small one. I've always had big, huge, bulky air compressors, which they're good for their purpose. I like to have a big bulky air compressor if I'm doing shop work or something like that, and I'm going to be doing a lot of grinding. So if I have a lot of pneumatic tools and I'm going to be grinding away on something, I would like to make sure my air tank has a chance to fill up a lot so I can get some good pressure on some of the you know some of the stuff I'm doing. Okay, so these, like I said, these lines are just there to place. So I can place this one here, come back over, place this one here. Once I get my placements of these, which they're good. I can see my yellows off a little on this side right here. So I may have to even fix that. But if I get this side on, then I'll have a reference. As I'm looking at it right now, I'm noticing this yellow kicks up while this yellow, I see an edge coming off, which means I need to pull that, tighten that line up right there. That's all I need to do. I'll just pull this line up to here. Yeah, I can see it. So I'm going to get this one in here. And then I may go to, to since, since I'm seeing this right here now that I'm doing this. Now that I'm doing this right here here I may have to mix my purple then I'll fix this down here I'm not gonna worry about the inside here because that's a different color of purple I don't even know what kind of purple midnight purple no that's gonna be it's got too much red in it this would be more of a midnight purple
So I like the Majora's Mask and the fact that they put these little shapes in and a lot of them have these really neat, like on top, I got to put a couple of these little slat things. And, and the way mine is set up is, like I said, a little different than I'm, I may have to. Mine's going to be different all the way around. But I've noticed so far, so is everyone's. Put your take on it. If, they, if people like it, they like it. If they don't, fun for you. Yep. It was fun playing it because I noticed that the colors, I, even in the, the Breath of the Wild, the color palette that they have on some of the things, just so gorgeous. I mean, just the thing, just the way the colors move, shine, and 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 have that that fleck to them. I'm I'm I makes me want to go through and do a lot of other things. Kudos to those artists who put all that effort into those 3D images in Breath of the Wild. Seriously, that is just... I'm going to say, it's easy to criticize, but it's hard to find how, why, and you know, why it was so amazing. Even if some things don't, some people I noticed don't like certain things. And I'm like, oh, you know what that person put into that? Whew. Weeks and weeks and weeks of effort sometimes people put into certain things to come out. And then people go, oh, I it. <laughs> Which I understand. It's totally... Totally up to the people who are, who are seeing the art too. So it's the artist can't get too offended either. Which is the other thing I noticed. Too many artists also sit around going, well, that's my art. It's just perfect as is. No, it ain't. Oh, it ain't. Uh-uh. Nope. Yeah, your 60-year-old self will be telling you that you were full of crap when you were 20. So I'm gonna load this up, this sucker up now, because I was watering it down. So now I'm gonna load it up, get it thick, push the lines up. Do I like the color? I do. I want it to be a little orangier though. Son of a. Goodness gracious. Son of a goodness gracious, I guess you could say. Yeah. Son of a goodness gracious, all solved. There we go. Goodness gracious. So I'm, I'm going to bring this one a little yellower. I don't mind the bottom color being darker too, because that's just a shadow color. Looks good for older things to have kind of a darker undertoning color. Now. This part right here is always the, the brainer. I said I always end up going in for breaths and holding my breath, but it's not good to do that. So. I remember the first like caricature-y thing I had to paint. So I did my first sculpture. It was just a goofball thing. It was a wine corker. But on the top of it, just had the, just a head of a, of a person on it, and I made glasses for the thing. I mean, it was goofy. It was fun. Well, it was the first thing I ever sculpted, and I used Sculpey with it. 
and I remember painting it. And I had been painting for a while. So painting and me had been good old buddies. But I noticed that when you paint upon an actual three-dimensional object that is going to be viewable to people, seen, like right, you can hold it, touch it. That right there was a whole nother kind of painting that I had to start doing. And with it has come my layering technique since, which isn't, you know, my, my technique is same as probably mine. It's just to go in, start layering and layering and layering and layering and layering until you get the desired effect. And there's other ways to go faster and achieve it. But what I always notice is if you're going to do the first one, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to probably make multiples of the Majora's Mask. So once I finish it, I'm going to make another one that has LED lights in it. I kind of want to go and do some different ones, find out which, which ones everyone likes, and then I'll, I'll, I'll set my store based on kind of the viewing on my channel, seeing what people like so I can set my store as well because I do want to have a fun store as well because I've been making stuff for years and I've had people tell me, why aren't you, why aren't you selling that stuff? And I am now. So I want to start loading my store up with the things that I make right in front of everyone's face. So that way everyone can also take a look at it, see if they do or don't like it. I don't want to have this just because I have limited space where I work. I'm working out of my, I always work out of a, my living area. I always have. So my shop is kind of my house, but I always keep it clean. I like a nice, nice clean shop. It's the former Navy guy in me likes to keep everything kind of clean. So I don't know if you can see the rest of my house is kind of like that. You can see in the background, I keep everything in shelves and whatnot. And I recommend if you do have any space, try to organize it as much as possible. I like pegboard. I run pegboard on all my previous shops. Since this is inside of a, a rental house, I don't do that. But pegboard is nice. I'm, I am going to start making some T's though, some A-frame T thing. It's an A-frame thing where you just make an A-frame setup, put a chain in between the, the, the hinge portion so it opens up. And then on both sides, you just put the pegboard. That way I can have my stuff set up even nicer the way I like it. I like to have complete and total access and visual access to stuff. Nothing's worse than when you're trying to find something and it is, you end up spending, uh, I don't want to talk about it, so frustrating whenever I have to, find something that is somewhere it's definitely up here i know i got it and i gotta go through all my shelves and <laughs> oddly enough i end up cleaning my house that way always vacuum always keep the place tidy well i got an eight-year-old son as well so i don't want him seeing his dad a dirt bag Don't want him to grow up to be a dirt bag either. He's a good dude. The other part of my team, the Johnny Tronic and Daddy Bot and Johnny Tronic. Super smart little dude. So proud and blessed to be his daddy. And with that, we will be moving ourselves into a lot more Johnny Tronic style situations. Someone say hi to me. I can say there's people here. Type something, for Pete's sakes. <laughs> so 
we're going to be working on some uh, Johnny Tronic stuff and we're going to be getting things set up with a lot more um, like, like actual, we want to have weekly cool uh, things to do for parents that are fun. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Everyone knows the volcano and paper mache volcanoes, but you can have fun with paper mache. And I mean, real fun with paper mache. Like if you were to layer over, there's ways to do molding and do things fun where you can actually kind of do a light molding for paper mache in a way that gets your shape unique. So you're not dealing with a standard volcano paper mache thing. Plus I got a couple of strategies that I like to use with my paper mache. I don't mind. See, I always have stuff set up for doing literally artwork style things. And with that, I do, um, I do, uh, I have a little bullet, one of those little neutral bullet thingies. And <laughs> you laugh. Starch, newspaper, but you got to chop the newspaper up semi decently. And then you just, you neutral bullet that stuff until it turns into a paste. So that paper mache paste is what I will also layer in with my paper, mache, my paper mache to add a little bit more contour, a little more detail, a little more depth. So if you want your rocks to look more rocky and not just have to wad up your paper mache all goofy, you can slop some of that in and around and then put the paper mache over the top of that. Now what's gonna happen is there's a lot more moisture in the starch than there will be of newspapers. So the starch to newspaper ratio will be so much that when the actual newspaper shrinks and shrivels it gets a gorgeous looking you can have anything with it it does anything from skin look to wood look to rock look and as it's drying you really can manipulate it so when i did my so when i did my uh, staff right here I don't know if you can see it, but the staff all the way around all of this is paper mache. The thing about it is, is when you blend it the way I say I blend it, it, when it dries, it dries in such a way that it is solid as rock. I can't explain rock. It's like rock. I was having a hard time. It, it, the good thing about it is, is it, it does take on a wood characteristic. So with uh, the, the right, almost wood tools, you can still carve with it. So I was able to take a knife and carve and it was really fun to carve with. So it gave me this real neat textured look. And as it was drying, I really had the ability to manipulate it. So I set this up to do this look. And what I did though, also in a couple of areas, so right in the, caps for any of the things that I was doing. So my caps that I have for my battery packs are resin. So as you can see, it's gray on the other side that I just took some two part resin putty, sculpted it. I send those Triforce. So we always put the little Triforce symbol. It's in Zelda, it's everywhere. So I have that cap there, this cap here, on button. Let me see here. Oh, did I finally run out of juice? Yeah, I did. I just need to let this thing sit out in the sun and charge. So that's a solar panel for my crystals on the top. And I have one battery that works at least, so boom, boom. So you can see, and the cool thing is, is I put all these little crystals around it. As you can see, all the little crystals that I have all the way around my, my actual LED crystals are super soft. If you wanna know what they are, I think I mentioned it in the previous video. This is um, hot glue, hot glue sticks. Chop up some, chop you up some hot glue, stu uh, glue sticks, and uh, just give it a little heat, like a lot of light, not a lighter, because lighter will leave uh, black marks. Don't do that. 
white crystal, it looks, you'll see it. It leaves a tan, it, you can't get it off. So you have to use uh, alcohol torch or you can go into um, your, your hair dryer. But watch out, you gotta get your hair dryer real close, real quick, just to make the little fuzzies shrivel. Anything more than that, it will leave a little flick mark. So yeah, this is my, these two work off of this LED, this solar panel right here. And what, it, what the concept was is at night, the wizard still has light on my crystals that I've made through the, these are just my resin crystals that I make. I embed them with uh, LEDs. So what I do is I get, a, I get my crystals. I don't worry about it. Make them out of anything, folks. Just make your crystal. This is um, uh, Sculpey. This is 15 minute. No, this is a uh, five minute epoxy. This is five minute epoxy too. See that amber look? That's what when you get a lot of five minute. Five minute epoxy stays clear. This is clear five minute epoxy too. Five minute epoxy stays clear until you get a big mass of it, and then it turns orange and yellow. But so I have my crystals, and what I do is I have a fast molding so, uh, solution. It's called uh, Amazing Remelt. Small little bucket of this stuff called Amazing Remelt, and. My remelt is what I use my remelt is what I use for I, I dip my crystal in, let it sit until it cools because you have to microwave it and you dip a crystal in, let it sit and then you pull the crystal out and then you have the imprint of the crystal. And then you take some real slow forming uh, resin. like I will get myself a nice you know 24 hour curing resin after that and then I take and I hover my LED over the top sticking in and then just let it sit and then when it comes out you get really so if you mix your you can mix your crystal your your color so you can have purple green any color crystal you want and um, that right there is how I've made all my wacky crystal things look back in previous videos to see some of my stuff I was showing for crystals or some of my crystal work stuff that I'm doing right now because I am working on a uh, really cool crystal fountain little small one desktop style crystal fountain it will be a one-off on this one but I am gonna make versions that I can mold I just want to make I just wanted to make something very not new I've used all the stuff I've used pumps I've used LEDs. I've used all the different things, but I kind of wanted to incorporate them all because I just thought, okay, so if I can get these crystals to kick, LED lights are embedded in. If I do it all right, that's they're all waterproof, so I'm not going to get any water inside the system. So if I have pumps, I can have I can have these things just buried in there. And it'll look all uh, so if I put the, if I did it right. So what I did was I used my crystals in my fountain, and I also used the um, the hot glue gun sticks, cut and chop them up into crystals. And those hot glue gun sticks next to my resin crystals that have the LED lights in it are only going to be there to diffuse, diffract the light, kind of create a neat, a neat looking ambiance in there. So I'm curious to see what's gonna happen when I, when I do the full water pump in there to see what colors can really kick. And then, then the next step of course is now that I got this, I want to go for just straight clear crystals with changeable LEDs in there. So that way it changes colors the, uh, so I'll do a nice frosted, look, frozen-y looking, like maybe some real light blues, maybe some purples and greens in there to kind of take a little color. And then in there, you would have the LED change colors. Did the right colors, though. 
So I want to play with color. I also want to play with uh, luminescence. So I wouldn't mind uh, some of my stuff having like a luminescent kind of uh, ir iridescent neon glowingness to it. So like it glows neon in the in a specific light, and then have that light somewhere in the system mixing around. So yeah, I mean I'm, I've been dabbling with a little bit of Arduino, looking into it a lot more. I've done a little, little bit with it. I want to get a lot more into it. It doesn't seem like it's I think everything right now is drag and drop. I saw this sweet Arduino style tablet specifically for Arduinos and it's not even that ex not even that expensive. So I'm looking to possibly get something like that. It's it's just for programming, but it allows for you to drag and drop stuff and it's just so much easier. What was the name of that tablet? It's like specifically an Arduino tablet, and the reason why it's a specific tablet for it is because the back of it has all the connector ports that you would need for all the different styles of circuit boards that have little connector pieces to them. So the way you would have to program a circuit board, each one of them may, you know, some of them have different um, different connector ports to, to do that to. So the, Ar the Arduino tablet has all those in the back of it. So that way, all you have to do is just buy that turkey. And I don't know how that, I mean, it was a little while since I've seen that. I wonder if it's still it's still popping on that, if they've done something new with it. But that's what I want to get so I can start getting some more LEDs put into this. So triangles are just starting to kick. I know it looks a little bit, a little bit loose right now. But once this side's there, and once I tighten them, like I said, this right here is just the beginnings of me tightening them. I'm really stoked. I'm actually having a lot of fun doing this. It's keeping me on my projects, which sometimes I tend to get a little bit lackadaisical with. As long as I have this going daily, I'm going to be able to give you guys a half hour every single day to pop this thing. And then real soon, this will be done. I'm going to have myself going on to maybe a nighttime show, probably sometime around 536. Tell me what you think. And with that, I'm thinking I want to do like a – like I mentioned in other shows, me doing my smaller stuff. I'm, I want to start like this is a project that I've, I've been it's been sitting. I'm waiting. I need to turn. I need to make a mold of this turkey. It's a little monkey paw. Made it for some people. It's not a necessity, but it would be cool for them to have. That is my monkey paw that I did. So when I was talking about Arduino stuff, I had all the circuit boards in the back shoved into there. I had to pull them all out for the for the newer version that I did build. So I have a larger version, and I do have a lot of videos on that as well. So I am going to be creating an actual full-on video of that one of how I created the monkey paw for the movie video the, for the video that I did movie that I well, it's actually a movie prop. The name of the movie is called Rum Go. Should be coming out soon. Check it out. And um, it has to do with uh, the cursed monkey paw. So I got this, which is a mini version of the one that I made. So the one that I made actually had real fur. But as you can see, I do not want to do real fur. And I'm not going to lie to you. I've had real fur things. I hate them. Me personally. I don't like little tchotchkes with a lot of fur on it. Dip that sucker. I'm always moving around doing stuff. So I would I always dip it in paint or something because it hangs out of my pocket. And then I'm always working, doing things. And then before you know it, I dip it in paint, dip it in ink, dip it in water, dip it in stuff. It's always getting dipped. So I always end up a little furry dipped thing that looks like a mud ball. So... I'm not a big fan of the furry things, so that's why I got this to look furry, plus it looks pretty sweet. So, Okay, y'all. I'm wrapping today up. I've done my half hour and my extra after with Jibba Jabba. Um, come in more. I'm gonna be, uh, if you guys have any conversations that you want to add, please jabber into my comment box right here. I'm looking at it all the time to see if anyone wants to talk to me. Talk to me. I talk back like a parrot. So... Um, come on out and I'll, uh, I'll talk your ear off. This is me saying like, subscribe, hit.
hit the little bling, 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 notification bell and um, share, talk about it, get people in. I have fun conversation coming your way with some stuff on the side. I'm actually going to be uh, – real soon I am going to be bringing some people in, but I want to get some people showing up. If I'm not going to have anybody showing up, I'm not going to bring people in to talk and have and uh, have some live conversation. Some really neat people in my town, some good artists. There's some famous people in this town. If people like this channel, I'll get some people in here to, 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 squawk, to squawk into your ear. Okay, people? Enjoy the rest of the day. I am out.